Good morning, everyone. So I'm Ute Chambers. I work at the Tree Fruit Research and Extension Center in Wenatchee, and I manage the Decision Aid system. And that's what I want to talk about today: um, how can you use the Decision Support System uh, Aid system to help you <coughs> better manage your tree fruits? The Decision Aid system is an online system. You can access it on the website das.wsu.edu, and we pull different information to make this system a decision support tool that helps you in managing pests. So what we do is we take weather data from AgWeatherNet as well as from the NOAA forecast system and we take that weather data to run our pest models. And the pest models calculate what status the pest is in and linked to that is rec our recommendations. In our management recommendations, we include information from the WSU Crop Protection Guide. So from there we get information what pesticides are recommended at what time of the year for which crop and against what pests. Then we also take information from the Northwest, Northwest Hort Council from their MRL database, maximum residue level data, and that we show you on DAS as well. So we take a lot of different information and put it into one so it's easy for you to use and make best choices for um, pest management. We've heard over the years that people like to use DAS because it helps them in deciding when is the best timing for pest management strategies. They say that it helps them with their overall idea of integrated pest management and it helps with choosing um, the, the right kind of pesticides. So today I want to focus a little bit more on the spray guide that we show on the decision aid system. When you come to the decision aid system and you, and you look into the spray guide after you've viewed the management recommendations or you go into it directly, uh, we provide an overview of the recommended pesticides, each as a little card that you see in this, this view and what you see is the name. We also want you to focus first on the efficacy, what pests can be controlled with this pesticide. And then underneath you see a color gradient from green over yellow to red. And that shows you the range of pesticide effects each particular pesticide can have on natural enemies. So natural enemies are the good guys in an orchard. We want to have them in the orchard because they help um, control aphids and mites and so forth. The, oops, oh yeah, right. So, natural enemies, just like the pests in the orchard, are affected by the pesticides. They can take them up either by directly being sprayed on, they can eat them on the leaf surface or the fruit surface. As they walk on the residue, they can take it up that way. When they clean themselves, they can ingest it orally that way too. And we know people have looked at pesticide effects, but most studies um, refer to acute toxicity, which is when a pesticide is applied and the natural enemy walks on that pesticide and after 24 to 48 hours researchers in the lab look is this natural enemy still alive or is it dead? But we know now that the pesticide effects can be way more subtle. We know that pesticides can reduce the long-term survival of adults and juveniles. It can reduce the number of eggs laid and it can reduce the number of eggs that hatch. We know that some pesticides can prolong the, the juvenile development, so how long the larvae develop of a natural enemy. And it can even alter the sex ratio of the offspring, of the progeny. progeny. So in a 2013, in a study that ended in 2013, a lot of researchers have looked at these seven pesticides and how they affect different natural enemies that are important in western orchards. And we looked at all those different parameters of how a pesticide can affect natural enemies, but then we put it together in one value. How does the pesticide affect the population growth overall? And you can imagine you have two populations, they both start with the same number of individuals. One population, the control is not um, exposed to any pesticide while the other one is 
exposed to a certain pesticide. And then we observe what's going to happen with that population over one generation. And then as you can see, the control population starts growing nicely, while the population exposed to a certain pesticide does not grow as much. And how, that, how much that difference is between the not exposed and the exposed population is how we then uh, categorize, again, the effects of pesticides on a natural enemy. So if the reduction is 80%, then that is a harsh effect a high impact of that pesticide on the natural enemy and so forth. So we did that with the entire combinations of pesticide and natural enemies that I just showed and we have this table put together for you on our website enhancedbiocontrol.org so you can look at the data that we generated. And there you can see green for low impacts, yellow for moderate impacts and red for high negative impacts on the, of the certain pesticides on the natural enemies. And when you click on either of those fields, you can see, if you're interested, the different detailed parameters that we looked at and how these negative effects, um, um, where they come from. Is it that no eggs hatch? Well, if no eggs hatch, then we don't have a next generation. Or is it because all the adults die and so forth? And granted that this data is all generated in the lab, but it still has, has value for how we can determine or estimate the risk of that pesticide when we put it out in an orchard. So we don't want to disrupt the natural enemies if we can help it. So then we can choose different pesticides or we choose a time when the natural enemy is not um, susceptible. All this data and more data we put together in another database we collected um, pesticide effect data f throughout the web uh, from different organizations and we put it together in this um, orchard pesticide effects on natural enemies database that you can access at any time. How you can access it, you can either search by an individual pesticide or you can select a crop you're interested in, you want to manage and a certain um, pest. For example, I chose apple and codling moth. And what it does then, it, it looks into the database and it pulls out all the materials that you can use to control codling moth and apple in Washington state. And it lists those in, in this nice table. And then you can see on the right hand side, this, the color gradients again. So those are the effects of each pesticide on the natural enemy community. And that varies how, how the colors are put together. Now, those are all the natural enemies that we know of and that we have access to, but you might say, well, I really have aphid issues or I only have mite issues. And then you can use the filter on the right side to, to pick aphids or mites or leaf rollers or what have you as a, as a um, category. And then we narrow down the natural enemies in, in that column. So here we show then the natural enemies only that affect aphids and only natural enemies that affect mites and so forth. And there you can see how the pesticides affect those natural enemy groups. You can sort those columns and then it gives you a better idea how to compare the different pesticides and their effects and, and gives you an idea what you might choose if you choose to uh, use something selective to control codling moth without risking to disrupt the natural enemies of aphids or mites. <coughs> And that information feeds back into the DAS spray guide. So those color gradients you see is exactly the information you have in the open database. There are some, um, the, the blue, it's hard to see, but the blue rectangles with numbers in them show you how, how many data points we have. There could be different sources, different natural enemies, different studies. And then there's a little batch that indicates to you is this data purely um, based on acute toxicity or is it based on our population growth risk? <clears throat> if you want to compare the um, pesticides in more detail, then we can we list out that different natural enemy groups by what they feed on in the orchard. You can see the mite predators or you can see leaf roller parasitoids grouped together, uh, woolly apple aphid parasitoid or other 
aphid predators and parasitoids. And if you hover over each of those color gradients, um, you can go into more detail if you're interested in what kind of species we're talking about that make up this color gradient. All right. Other things that we want to improve the decision, so, uh, the decision making with are new models for natural enemies. We have been developing new models for green lacewings, surfeit flies, and a Paracilla predator, Dariochorus. So right now we're at a stage where we're um, doing field validation for the last two species, but the green lacewing models have been validated and, and they're working well. What we learned from those models is that for this particular green lacewing, we have three generations or three flights in a year. So what, what does that matter to you? Well, if we then go into a commercial orchard and we can monitor the, the green lacewing and then we know, well, this is the time in the gray area, this is the time when we should expect the first generation, but we don't see it, we only see the second generation. We know something happened that made this generation disappear and then we can go look back knowing that, that some of the uh, pesticides have ne negative effects on lace wings, then we can determine was it uh, caused by pesticide use. And when, we, when we're done with our um, implementation process of putting the natural enemy models onto DAS, then we can give you better recommendations in terms of timing certain pesticides, when are they least disruptive to natural enemies, so that you can take full advantage of the of biocontrol in your orchards to control aphids and mites and other secondary pests. Another feature on DAS that I would like to highlight today is the Historic Weather Data Center. <coughs> so you find it in the main menu on the top and there you can answer questions like, well, did this spray go on at the right time? You know, you get sprays that are recommended for a certain time, but maybe the sprayer broke, maybe you didn't have the crew, maybe the weather was bad, and you couldn't put it on at the exact same time it was recommended. So here you can go back and uh, compare what happened, what did the model tell me when I actually put it on versus when it was recommended I should have put it on. So how you do this is you choose a location, the weather station nearby your orchard, then you pick the pest model right there, and then you choose in the calendar the two different dates that you want to compare. And then you get, just like in the regular DAS model output, you get information about the degree days, um, what conditions uh, uh, occurred, so what is the pest doing at that time, and what were the management rec recommendations at that time. So that gives you a good idea of what happened in the past and if that had any effect of your um, efficacy and your control. Switching the topic a little bit, in 2015 now we will roll out two new features for DAS. One is the notifications and the other one is mobile monitoring. So notifications we've been talking about, we want to send out alerts to you, the user, for selected pest model events. So when certain things happen that the models predict in your orchard, we want to alert you, give you a heads up. Um, you, can, you will receive um, those notifications on your computer for each model, but you can choose if you want to receive those alerts as email. And you can do that for each pest model, and then you can choose what kind of severity of um, information you want to be mailed to. For example, do you want to know um, only when fire blight infection happens, or are you also interested in knowing uh, when the model predicts high or extreme high risk? So that you can set all yourself. Then this is what the, the alerts will look like. They give a very brief overview for what happened, at what station, um, which model, and then you can link to it and, and see the full um, model output. Monitoring. we have been developing a web app so you can use your mobile device, your iPhone or Android phone, and you can use that to set up 
individual orchards that you manage and then set up traps in those orchards. So then the, the, through the GPS, the device will know, we will, we will get information where your orchards are, and that, that information will be saved. And then you can, every time you go check those traps, um, you can punch in the numbers of the trap counts right in the orchard. And then uh, that data will be summarized and a little bit analyzed, and then you can see what the seasonal trends are in your trap catches, or how, if, if your trap catches are distributed evenly throughout your orchard or where your hotspots might be, and you might, may want to focus management just there and not uh, put cover sprays on. So we'll have that for traps, but also for sampling. So if you want to sample for leaf rollers, as you walk through the orchard, you will be able to take samples, put in numbers for this pest, and then it will remember what um, location, what, what, uh, what your location was in the orchard. So you can then see where in the orchards did you take those samples and what were the numbers. Um, one important feature will be that we allow you to share that information for between scout and uh, pest manager. You can share that data and, and look at it and make your uh, management recommendations. We have improved the DAS mobile site. We've gotten some comments in the couple, last couple years that it didn't work so well. It was too big to load uh, fast enough to be used, useful in the field. So we've made changes to that and it should run uh, much more smoothly this year. One big change, and uh, I've been mentioning this in the last couple years, is that we will have to start collecting subscription fees for the use of DAS. So what will happen is that for each weather station you use on DAS, we will collect $150 a year. And with that, you get access to all the tree fruit models, historic data, the DAS spray guide notifications, and any, any upgrades that we make. Uh, we need to access, uh, limit the access of for, for one user to four uh, devices so that you can use it then with your desktop, maybe laptop, and a, a smartphone and a tablet computer, for example. What we do with this money is we have to cover our operation costs. So we are no longer um, financially supported by the Tree Fruit Research Commission, which has uh, put a lot of uh, support and funding into our system. Other research, um, research grants also dried up, so we need to start charging the user and we have about $150,000 a year of operation costs, which pays a programmer, which pays uh, half a manager position, like what I'm doing at this uh, time. It will cover the um, use, the, the fee that we need to pay Google for using their services and their maps and so forth. Since we are a nonprofit organization within WSU, if it happens that we collect more money than we anticipate because we had to gauge how many people will stay on after we start collecting fees, if it happens we collect more money than we need, then we will um, either fast track development of certain features and roll them out faster with that extra money or we can credit um, the leftover money to everybody uh, for the coming year. If you ever have any questions about how to use DAS or how to get on or what to do, um, we have the help center on the DAS website still. So you can uh, watch videos that explain step by step how to use certain features. Uh, we have, does it work? Yeah, we have an online manual as well where you can read up on what to do step by step. We have a nice feedback button on the right corner of the screen. That has been very helpful. If you have a question or if something doesn't work, just click on it and it goes directly to me and our programmer and we respond within 24 hours, uh, typically. So there's also a contact box that also you can type in your questions and, and suggestions that you might have right there and we'll get back to you as fast as we can. If you would like a little bit more support on how to get started, um, I still offer workshops, hands-on workshops. Just call me up and we schedule a meeting with computers where you can sit at the computer and, and play with DAS on your own and I'll give support and ideas of how to do certain things. So just contact me. 
thanks go to our research, uh, Treeford Research Commission for, for continued support of this project, the specialty crop block grant program from WSDA that has supported um, the notifications and the online, uh, the, the mobile mo uh, monitoring tool that we are we're creating. Um, we have gotten funding from the specialty crop research initiative to make the um, orchard pesticide effects database. And so here's our team. Um, besides me, it's Vince Jones, the director of DAS, and Brad Pettit and Cole Jackson are our programmers that do a tremendous job in, of turning the, inf the amount of information we have for you into something simple and useful. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you.